it was higher than 5%. Okay, it means you can easy to calculate every year you are going to receive $5 interest from, from the month. Okay, so you, you are going to receive $5. Okay, and your cost is $95. Okay, so $5 divided by $95. So every year you are going to earn about, I, I think all near to the 5.5%. 4.5%. So it means the second company, the chest, the senior chest, it provides provided about 5.5% expected return rate to the investors. It's the, the, the return rate is higher than 5%, high, higher than the first company. Okay, it's just because this is from a non-well-known company. Okay, it's from a non-well-known company, it also means the risk is higher, okay? Because the first one, the, the senior mass, mass, it's where the company, we already know the company, okay? So normally we are thin, if we put the money on this company, it's safer compared to the uh, another company, okay? So invest on the on mass, you are allowed a little bit lower return compared to you in, if, if I re require you invest your money on the, the, the standard chest. Okay, so if, if I ask you to put your money on the standard chest, I have to provide you a higher return compared to the first one. Okay, so here we can see, okay, this is the bond price, the formula, I think, if you, you are, if you have studied about investment or finance, finance management, financial management, I think you already know the, the, the formula. Okay, I, I think this is easy. Okay, the I is the interest, the interest, the company, the investor receive every period from the company. Okay, maybe one year, maybe six months, maybe, maybe a season. It depends the term. Okay, so it, it I is, is the interest, okay? And the R is the minimum return rate that the investor require from the, the company. Okay, just like I say, for the different company, I will require different R, okay? If you are risky, I will require a higher R, a higher return rate. Okay, if you are, if, if you are risk-free, okay? And I will require a risk-free return, okay? So based on the formula, you will find because here, okay, so here, okay, I, okay. Okay. Okay, here, this is the interest, interest. Okay, based on this, it's based on the terms. Maybe just like I say, maybe one, once a year, maybe once a quarter, okay. And here the R, the R is the minimum return rate, okay, that investor require from the, the, the company. Okay, so this was based on the risk, based on the risk. If the company is risky, okay, and I will require a higher return rate, okay. So if I require a higher return rate, and you will find the bond price will de decline, will decline, okay. So because the the interest in it's kind of just like an interest rate, the return rate is we put on the return rate, it's discount rate, on the uh, denominator. Okay, because we play in denominator, so you can see here. Okay, and this is the interest, this interest, and this is the principal. Okay, the principal. Okay, I just discount all the cash flow in, and we can get the bond price. Bond price. Okay, so if the risk is higher, I will require the the R become higher. 
Okay, and finally you get you will get the bond price will reduce. Okay, so based on this, based on this, you will find if the company with a higher risk, and if they provide the same term, and then I will require the, the, the company reduce the price, the bond price. Okay, it means you have to provide a lower price. And otherwise, I just go to purchase another company's bond, not, not from you. Okay, so, and from the other side, you will find if the, the, the same, same reason, as you can see here, okay, if, if the company is risk-free or the risk is smaller, and I will, I will require a lower, a lower return rate. And in this situation, I am willing to pay a higher bond price. Bond price, bond price. So you, you will find based on the risk, okay, for the higher risk company, I will require a lower bond price. Okay, I, I mean, if you, you, you like to compare the bond price, you have to base on the same terms. In this case, I, I just say, okay, the first company and the second company, they based on the 10 years, the, the maturity is 10 years and the coupon rate, the stated rate is 5%. Okay, and the par rate is $100. Both companies are totally the same. Both, based on this, I can only compare the, the, the bond price. Okay, if, if the, the, the maturity is different, different, or the, the coupon rate is different, or the power rate is different, you cannot compare the, the, the bond price directly. Okay. Okay, so I just like to continue that, continue that last time's uh, topic. Okay. And next we are going to get to this today's topic. Okay, so normally risk management, we have some step. I, in fact, we already discussed in the last time because the last week one student asked about the steps. Okay, so normally we can divide the step into maybe two or maybe three or four or five. Some, some, some people maybe mention about, maybe you can, we can uh, divide by the step into three or four or five. Okay, but here I choose, we just provide a four steps. The first one, risk identification. Okay, I mean, you have to know where are the, the risk from, okay? So you have to identification, maybe the, uh, the, the, the interest rate, okay? If you put, you, if, if in your portfolio, including a lot of bonds, okay? And the, the interest rate will affect your portfolio. Just like here, you can see, because most of the portfolio are from bond and bond affected by the mini, minimal return rate here the are minimal return rate and minimal return rate except the the risk you will also consider about the risk free rate okay maybe i'll give you a little bit more here okay i mean when you consider about the minimal return rate most of the time you are based on the re risk free okay because the risk free return okay i need okay normally you uh, you require the, the company provide your return it's based on the risk free return okay because this one is risky Okay, and this one is risk free. Okay, and I just pre just press a uh, risk premium, a uh, risk premium. Okay, risk premium. In fact, this is based on the risk. Okay. Okay, maybe I just use the term risk premium. Okay, and the risk risk premium is based on risk. Risk. Okay, so normally you are based on a risk free return plus a risk premium. Okay, and the risk premium is based on risk. Risk it means higher risk you have to pro provide a higher risk premium. Okay, so let's come back here. Yep. 
Okay, so you have to identify where are the risk from. Okay, if from the, the, the interest and you have to care about the risk, if from the, some material price, maybe you just produce something, so you have to care about uh, your, your earning or your cost just based on some material price. Okay, so you have to identify the risk. Okay, but in the last time, we only focused on the risk assessment. Okay, risk as measurement. Okay, so in last week, we just show you how to calculate, how to compute risk. Okay, we use the variance. In last week, we only discussed about, about variance, but in fact, we also use CAP, CAPM and CAPM, capital asset price model. Okay. And the other way, we also use the value at the risk, also VAR, value at risk. Okay, because I kept CAPM and VAR, we need more mathematical skills. So in last week, I just skip this part. I only introduced about the variance because I think most of students are, have, have studied uh, statistics in, in your first year, okay? And so I, I, I do believe you already have the concept about uh, the variance. So in the last week, we only introduced about the variance. Okay. In the future, if, if you are interested, maybe you, you can get more detail about uh, CAPM. CAPM, I think maybe some students already know because in investment or in financial measurement, we also introduced the, this model. Okay. And VAR. Or VR, you need more statistic skill or mathematics skill. Okay, so maybe you 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 can learn this part in your risk management course. Okay, so in last week we only focus on the variance. Okay, but, but in fact you have to know not just variance. We also include many different methods at least CAPM and and and, and value at the risk. Okay, so after you already know. Where the, the where risk come from, okay. And next, you have to provide some risk management strategy, okay. Including maybe you can ignore the risk if the risk is tiny, very small. It, it will not affect the company, okay. It's very small. Maybe you will think about okay, I can ignore about the the the, the risk. For example, now suppose in your home, your parents just purchase a bicycle, okay? A bicycle, maybe you, you, your parents spend about maybe 10 years dollar, okay? 10 years dollar to purchase a, a bicycle, okay? And maybe you will worry about someone will steal your bicycle, probably it's possible, okay? If someone steal your bicycle, and for your family, you are lost. Maybe I just say ten or thirty dollar or ten dollar, ten or thirty dollar, thirty US dollar. Suppose it's thirty US dollar. Okay, you may lose thirty US dollar. Okay, so you worry about this. Okay, but after you you just so you know the first one, you identify the risk. Maybe someone will steal your your bicycle. Okay, and how about the loss? Okay, it's about three hundred or ten. Thirty dollars, thirty US dollar. Okay, thirty US dollar in Taiwan dollar is about nine hundred dollar. Okay, now in, in Taiwan dollar, but I'm not sure in in Indonesia's uh, currency. I'm not sure. Okay, but in in Taiwan dollar is about nine hundred dollar. Okay, nine hundred dollar in Taiwan. Oh, it's okay. It's not so high. Okay, so maybe I will worry about this, but I will do nothing. I'm not going to purchase a uh, insurance to protect my car. Okay, so if someone steal my, my bicycle, I think it's fine. Only $900, 900 new town dollar. It's okay, it's okay. But, but now it's not a bicycle, it's a car, it's a car. Okay, it's a car, maybe I think it's about uh, 30,000. It's not, it's not, Thirty dollar is thirty thousand. Okay, thirty thousand US dollar. Thirty thousand US dollar in New Taiwan dollar is about one million. About one million. Okay, 
So if I am, I'm only about someone steal my, my, my car, okay, the same, just like a bicycle, okay, someone will steal, may steal the car, I'm worried about this, okay, and if someone steal my car, I'm going to lo lose about one million, about one million for me is a big money, it's a big money, okay, one, one hundred, one, one million, I, I have to work for one year, okay, so it is a big, big money for me. So I'm worried about this. Okay, and if someone steal my, my car, it affect me a lot, affect me a lot. So in this situation, I have to do something. Okay, maybe I think, okay, I like transfer the risk to someone. Okay, so the first, maybe I can just easy to purchase an insurance. I just purchase insurance. Okay, and maybe I'm going to pay $10,000 Ten ten thousand thousand dollar, okay, about one percent the car price, okay, ten thousand ten thousand dollar, and the, the insurance company will protect my car. It's not protect my car, uh, but you will give me a guarantee. If someone steal my car, they will give me an insurance claim, okay. And the claim maybe is one million, okay, maybe it's seventy or seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay, it depends how much uh, risk, how much insurance pre pre premium you, you, I pay. Okay, so after I purchase the, the, the insurance, I just transfer the risk to the, the insurance company. Maybe 100%, maybe 60. Okay, here I can give you more. Okay, I just say for transfer, maybe you can transfer 100% to the insurance company. Okay, to the insurance company. Okay, but if you like to transfer 100%, maybe you have to pay, okay, for example, every year you have to pay, okay, maybe not one, not 10,000. Maybe you have to pay 20,000 20, NT. Here I mean NT dollar or New Taiwan dollar. Okay, new time dollar. Okay, and after I pay twenty thousand dollar insurance pre premium, okay, I am free, risk free. I don't have to worry about someone steal my my car. Okay, because I I already transfer all the risk to the insurance company. I just transfer all the risk to the, the insurance company. If someone steal steal my car and the company will give me one million because the car worth one million, was one million, okay. But most of the insurance company, they will not accept 100% insurance, okay. Because it will involve some moral crisis, okay. So most of the time, they, maybe they will accept you, okay, maybe 70%, okay. 70%, they only take the risk of all risk about 70%. Okay, it means, it means if someone steal your car, they will give you $700,000, not 1 million, not 1 million, because they only protect you, the car only 70%. Okay, so if someone steal your car, they will give you 70% the car price. So only give you $700,000, okay. And if based on the duration, maybe you have been okay. So now, so I should I pay fourteen thousand the the insurance premium? Normally, no. Okay, you will be cheaper. You will be cheaper because you take the risk thirty percent. You are not transfer the hundred percent risk to the, the 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 insurance company. Okay, so. This price is based on the the twenty thousand dollar. It's based on one hundred percent risk. Okay, but now you only transfer thirty percent, thirty percent. Okay, so maybe the company will receive will collect from you only maybe only ten thousand dollars because you take thirty percent risk. You are more be careful to take your car. 
Okay, Be before maybe because you think I already buy a insurance, so it I can park my car anywhere. Okay, and maybe unlock is also okay because I have insurance. I have insurance. Okay, if someone steal my car, I can also I can still get my money back. One million is so no problem. Okay, but in the second 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 situation, you only buy seventy percent. 70%. So if someone steal your car, you can only get $700,000 back. You have to take response about 30%, 30%. Okay, so at least you're Asian, you are more careful, you are careful. Okay, every time you leave your car, you will lock your car, okay, because you have to response for about 30% the car price. Okay, so this is about a risk management strategy. Okay, you can transfer, you can buy a insurance, or you can use some other tools to reduce the risk. So today, later, I'm going to introduce, in most of the company, they like to use derivatives to reduce the risk. Okay, use the derivative to reduce the risk. So in this, Today's, uh, today's course, we are going to discuss how to use derivative to hedge, to reduce the risk, to reduce the risk. Okay. Okay, so after we do something for our risk, okay, and every, every time you had to come back to check the efficiency, the efficiency. Okay, for example, later you are going to see, okay, here, We don't have enough time, so I cannot give you uh, the detail. Okay, so in fact, when we use the derivative to reduce the to hedge, and most of the time, we we, we maybe in if you go to study the risk risk management, you will heard a delta hedge. Okay, here the delta just like the virus. Okay, but they are different. Oh, here the delta is because this. Delta. Okay, we use the delta H or this one, delta. It's from the, the, the Greek letters. Okay, so in the risk management, you are you may see a chapter discuss about the Greek letters. Okay, because we use the Greek letters to describe about the hedge ratio, but it's the kind of the hedge ratio. Okay, so in the most of time, you are use delta H. Delta, delta H means, okay, now suppose I think the interest will affect your portfolio. Okay, so I like to know how the interest affects the portfolio. So I just take a calcul calculus. So I just use the partial, maybe this is the portfolio price. Okay, and this is the risk. No, sorry, not risk. It's the interest rate, interest rate. Okay, so I just calculate the partial P over partial, okay, the risk, the, the, the interest rate. Okay, this we call this delta, this delta, because I like to know how the interest rate affect your portfolio's will or the value. Okay, so I, we use this to, to calculate the delta and use this to hedge. This is a kind of hedge ratio, it's hedge ratio. Okay, so normally you have heard about uh, the delta H, delta H, but as we know, this is the slope, the function slope. For example, here, this is the portfolio's value and this is the, the interest rate. Okay, and the value may be just like this here. And the delta is mean now the, the interest rate is here. Okay, so based on this, I can get the delta here here. So this is the delta. delta. I just based on this to plan the hedge ratio, the hedge ratio. But in fact, you will, you will find, okay, if the interest rate increase to here, increase to here, here's R2. Here the delta is not the same. It's not the same. 
Okay, so you will find the delta one, the delta two, they are, they are totally different. But in the beginning you had here, oh, sorry. In the beginning you had here, because when you start to hedge, the, the rate is R1. Okay, so I just based on the information and design how to hedge. Okay, but after maybe uh, one, one month later, the interest, the interest rate increased to R2. Okay, but at this situation, the delta is not delta one. It increased, it changed to the, the delta two, the delta two. So you cannot use the original delta to hedge. So why we have to, based on the action and evaluation, the, 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 the efficiency again and again. Okay, so normally you are, you have to care about not just delta. Delta is about the slope, and you also have to care about a curve, about a curve. So if you, you have to care about a curve and you have to know about a gamma. So normally we also have a gamma hedge, delta hedge and gamma hedge. But in today, on today, I'm not going to discuss about the detail. I here just like let you know why we have to, after the action, we have to evaluation, okay? Because when you, after you, you, you hedge, okay? Some the factor change, okay? After the factor change, the, the, the uh, risk measure efficiency already changed. So you have to consider to change the, the ratio again, change the pot, the proportion again, okay. So we, we have the gamma, gamma, gamma H, okay. Gamma H is considered about the, the sec, second, second time. We just did partial the DP over DR again. We just do the calculus again, and this one will help us. Will help us to calculate. A, about the curve severity. Okay, so this is about the risk management ste steps. Okay. And how to reduce the, the, the risk? In last time, we introduced a diverse diversification. Okay. And last time we give I give you a two investment example and use the two example combine uh, a portfolio and based on the portfolio we know we can reduce the risk we can reduce the risk okay so here i like to give you more about how this works how this how this matter works okay so here i like to introduce the risk we based on a, a, a normal risk for example a stock risk we can divide it by the risk into two parts. The first one, market risk. The second one, idiosyncratic risk. Okay, in fact, we include in two parts. The second part, idiosyncratic risk, it means the risk is from individual, is from individual, okay? And the other name, the, the market risk, we also call systematic risk, okay? And idiosync idiosyncratic risk, is unsystematic risk, unsystematic risk. Okay, when we're talking about diversify, okay, we can use diversify to reduce the risk. We are going to reduce about idiosyncratic risk. Okay, so here. Okay, when we're talking about diversify, Okay, we are go, trying to go to reduce about a idiosyncratic risk. Okay, it means, it means, okay, when you uh, increase the number of stocks, okay, you can reduce the risk. Okay, this part is from idiosyncratic risk. Okay, so here you can see here is the total risk. This is the total risk, the stock risk, including two parts, two parts. The first part here, this part, this part is about idiosyncratic risk. Idiosyncratic risk is from individual, from individual. For example, okay, 
couple years ago when the jobs okay i, I guess you, you already know jobs the C, ceo of the apple okay jobs when the jobs sick okay get sick okay maybe some people already expected the the, the jobs is going to die it's going to die soon okay so for this part when the jobs passed away okay it affects maybe only apple okay for the jobs okay maybe it only only affect about apple okay because jobs is kind of asset for asset for for apple okay it can contribute their a lot to the, the apple to the company okay so it's just kind of apple okay so when when jobs died died okay the apple just lost an important asset okay so it will affect apple a lot of apple a lot so in in for example if you, if you just put all your money on apple okay and suppose suppose jobs passed away suddenly not any uh sign it just passed away soon okay in this situation it will affect apple's stock price a lot okay because nobody know what happened okay so suddenly the suddenly apple just lost a, an important asset okay so it will affect apple a lot if you put all your money on apple maybe it will drop about maybe 20 percent okay if the if jobs is very, very important for Apple and nobody know what happened, it just suddenly passed away. Okay, so in this situation, maybe suddenly the stock price dropped 20%, 20%. So it will affect a lot, affect a lot. Okay, but but suppose now you put your money, not just in Apple, you also put your money in Samsung. Okay, in Samsung and Xiaomi, some other, some other smartphone company. Okay, so maybe, maybe, I just say maybe, okay, the jobs that dead and maybe Samsung get benefit a little bit, maybe you will increase about 5%. Okay, maybe Xiaomi, the other one, maybe increase about 3%. Okay, maybe a lot of other, other company, they will also get benefit 1%. Okay, so if you just put all your money into different smartphone company. Okay, maybe the Apple reduced twenty percent, but it will benefit some other <coughs> company. Maybe five percent, maybe three percent. Okay, so finally, maybe you, you just lose two percent. You only lose two percent because you just put all your money in different companies. Okay, so this part is kind is called idiosyncratic risk okay it's just for individual for individual okay so if you put all your money into different companies you can reduce this risk you can reduce idiosyncratic risk okay then how about market risk okay market market risk it means it will affect all the company no matter who you are or it just affect all the company okay for example COVID-19 the company nobody expect this okay it affect all the company all the all the all, all over the world not just apple it also affect about samsung also affect xiaomi okay you affect all the company you cannot avoid this part you cannot avoid this part so you you find like like we say here okay this part is from idiosyncratic okay if you just diversify all your investment and you can reduce okay and this part this part is systematic risk you cannot reduce okay no matter you in, in you put your money in samsung in xiaomi okay in stc okay some other company you cannot avoid okay because when the uh, adverse event occur it will affect all the company. It will affect all the company. Okay. Maybe one day if we can 
uh, space travel, you can invest in some other plan, not, not in Earth. And you can reduce about this part risk because you can, you can invest your money on maybe some other plan, some other place like Earth, the other Earth. In this situation, maybe one day we can reduce the systematic risk. Okay, but in right now, because you have to put all your money on earth. Okay, so anything, any, any adverse event occur, if they will affect all over the world and you, will, you cannot avoid this risk. Okay, so this is about the idiosyncratic risk and market risk, okay. Okay, so next I'm going to give you a little bit more use mathematics. Okay, but uh, I think I'm not asking you to remember the detail. I just like that you know how the diversification works. Okay, how the diver why the di divers diversify can help us to reduce the risk. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, in last week, we introduced how to calculate about the expected return. Okay, that's this one. Okay, and also how to calculate the variance, this is variance. Okay, so based on the formula you can get, okay, if you are interested, maybe you can check the statistic textbook. Okay, you can find this part in, in, in your, your textbook. Okay, so based on this, okay, because this is our portfolio, I just put all, um, all my money into different uh, stocks. Okay, maybe including uh, bond is also fine. Just including different, different items. Okay, so based on this, I will know the variance will become summation, the proportion square times the sigma square. Okay, and plus the covalence. This is a covalence. Okay, it means I will check this part from between um, two companies. Okay, and based on this, I just like to simplify the, the, the example. Okay, suppose I just let the W to be the same. I mean, I put all my money in same proportion. For example, if I pick 100 stocks, 100 stock, stocks, 100 companies, so now I just put 1% on one company, 1% one on one company. So in this situation, the end is 100, so 100. Okay, so based on this, I can get, I can get, okay, because the WI will be the same, will be the one over N. So I can just uh, move W square in front of the, the, the equation. So I can see here one over N square. Okay, one over n square. Okay. Uh, okay. Here, I just move this part out. Okay, because now I just suppose all the w to be one over n. Okay, one over n. Okay. And also here I can move out because now the n is the w is the same n, okay. So here you can get n one over n times one over n, okay. So finally you can get one over n square, one over n square here, one over n square, okay. And here is covalence, still covalence here, okay. And I just try to divide by n minus one. In time, in my n minus n, n times n minus one. Okay, because these two can cross out, so they are still the same, just like this one. They are the same. They are the same. Okay, and why I like I try to use it, try to divide by n n times n minus one. This one. Okay, because here, because in total I have n time n minus one covariance. I have that much n times n minus one covariance. Okay. And based on this, if I divide by this one, I can get a mean value. I just like to calculate about the mean value. 
para mi mating. Okay, because I can add here, I add all the covariance and divide by this one. Okay, because we have a, a, a two group. Okay, so here, and but because the I, I, in this case, the I not equal to J. Okay, so in total, in total, I have n times n minus one covariance, covariance. Okay, so just based on this, just based on this. Okay, so why here I just divided by this and times this. Okay, because I like to calculate the the mean value of the covariance, the covariance. Okay, and next I just based on this I. Suppose I let all the variance are totally the same. Okay, totally the same. Okay, maybe you are thinking, yeah, it doesn't make sense. How can I say the, the variance are totally the same? Okay, it, in fact, even they are not the same, it's also fine, it's also fine. Because I just like to, uh, when the n in, in, increase too near to the infinity, to infinity, Okay, finally, this number will reduce to zero, to reduce zero. Okay, let's say, for example, I just like the, the sigma equal to the maxima on all the sigma one, sigma two, until sigma n, because I have n items so in total, it's fine, because I just like to get one, one constant sigma, one constant sigma. So based on this, if I just said that this is the maxima, okay, I think because I already said it cut to be the maxima, okay, you are greater than you just summation all the sigmas. Okay, you are great, greater than this one, greater than this one. Okay, so I just let, suppose I just set the, the sigma to be the same or to be the, the max one, just to be the max one, okay, be the max one. Okay, so it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so based on this, based on this, again. And here, because now all the sigma are the same, and I add n times. So in total, this one summation sigma i square will be n square sigma square. Okay, i equal to one to n. Okay. So based on this, I can get this. I can get this. Okay. So finally, I can cross out one end. This I can cross one. Okay. And for the the other one, the other one, I just divided by n minus one. So this one I just rewrite to be this one. Okay. And here, n times n minus one is here. Is here. Okay, so now I just let n e approach to the infinity. Okay, so here n square divided by n, if n approach to infinity, this one will be zero, will be zero, because now the sigma is a constant. Okay, you just increase the denominator and the denominator cross to the approach to the infinity. And finally, the number will cross to zero. So you can see here, it will be a zero. Okay, and here, this one, n times n minus one div, div, divided by n. Okay, when the n approach to infinity, okay, this one will be cross to one, will be cross to, to one. Sorry, this is square. Okay, it will be cross to one. Okay, so finally, finally, we can get the variance, the risk will be the mean covariance, the covariance, mean covariance. So you can see from the beginning until the end, we we just cross out this, oh, sorry. We just cross out this part, this part. So this part, is idiosyncratic risk, idiosyncratic risk from individual, from individual. And this part, this part, 
is from the market, is market risk. So you cannot reduce this part. Okay, you can only reduce this part by increasing your number of stocks. Okay. Okay, so next I'm going to introduce about uh, how to hedge by using derivatives. Okay, normally we like to use futures and options. Okay, but I think today I, I'm going to focus on only futures. Okay, uh, we don't have time to discuss about options. And also options is more complexity compared to futures, I have to say, okay. Because before I just say, we use Delta H, we use Gamma H, okay. But if you use futures to H, normally, okay, if, if the time, the maturity is the same, the maturity is the same, normally the Delta H, the Delta could be one or minus one. Okay, so normally use future to H is more easy, more easy to understand compared to options, okay? And for the most option, because you had to base on, most, most of the time we use Black, Black Shores formula and the Delta and the Gamma is not easy to calculate. You, you, you need to use your computer to calculate the Delta and, and, and Gamma. Okay, so today I'm going to focus only on the futures. Okay, how to use, use the futures to hedge. And before this, maybe I'm going to give you a, a simple concept about futures and the options. Okay, but before this, I'd like to introduce to invest very powerful investors, their viewpoint about uh, the derivatives, derivatives. Okay, the first one from Warren Buffett. I, I think most of you maybe already heard of the name. Okay, Warren Buffett. Okay, so this sentence I just take from the Warren Buffett. He said, in our view, however, derivatives are financial weapons of mass destruction, carrying dangerous threat, while now Latin are uh, potentially lethal. Okay, this is from uh, Warren Buffett's annual letter. They just give the letter to their shareholder from 2002. Okay. And the other one is from George Soros. It's also a very powerful investor in the world, not just in the US, I can, I can say in the world. Okay, is there no special purpose? You mean the, the, the derivative, no special purpose is provided only to encourage it unstable spec, speculative trading. Okay, so basically both of the in power investors, they give, the derivatives of negative definition, I have to say, okay. But if you treat derivatives to be a investment tool, okay, it, it was just like Warren Buffett and George Soros said, it's very dangerous, okay. And also it's, very, it's risky, it's risky. I can give you an example, okay. Suppose now you invest all your money on stock market, no matter it's a single company or you just diversify, whatever. Okay, in one year, in one year, okay, at the, at the most, I, I think at the most, you may lose about 50%. Okay, it's the worst situation. You probably lose 50%. Okay, but normally, normally, Maybe you are only lost the, the worst situation, maybe lost 20%. It's probably okay. And maybe you will earn, you will make money about 20%, 30%. It's also possible. It's also possible. I mean, you invest your money on the stock market, but but if you invest your money in the derivatives market, okay. Mm, one year, you, pro you, you have a chance to lose 100%. You have a high chance to lose 100%, okay, 
And also you have the probability to earn 100%. It's also possibility. It's also possibility. Okay. So I just like to say, okay, if you treat the derivatives to be a uh, investment item, okay, you probably you probably lost 100 percent okay you also had a chance to earn 100 percent or more maybe 200 percent okay it's possible if you invest your money into the derivative market okay and just like say if you put your money into the stock you just purchase stock okay maybe 50 percent is very very in, impossible normally normally i think you based on the, the probability, okay? Maybe you have a chance to lose 30%, okay? And you also have a chance to earn 30%, 30%, okay? So you can see this from negative 100% to you may earn maybe 30, 300%, okay? And here, negative 30% and positive 30%. Okay, so based on this, you will find the range, e easily to see the range. Okay, sometimes we also use the range to measure the risk. Okay, last time we used the variance. The variance is, a, is a, a way. Okay, and the range, the range is also, it's also a way to measure the, 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 the risk. Okay, if you forget how to calculate the range, maybe you, you can, come back to check your statistic textbook. Okay, so based on this, we know, okay, the rough tip is risky. It's very risky compared to stock, to stock. So this is why the Warren Buffett is say, okay, it's danger, okay, very, very dangerous. Okay, very dangerous that, okay and potentially lethal, okay? And also you can find it from the George Soros, okay? Only encourage unstable speculative trading, okay? No special purpose, okay, for their viewpoint. But in fact, in fact, I think most of the people especially the investment spurt, they will agree, they agree. Yes, okay, for the raptors, maybe the increase in the complexity of risk environment, okay, but they also enhancing the ability of in enterprise risk management, okay? It means they also provide a tool. If you treat this like a tool, you not, not, treat them as an investment uh, item, okay? Not treat them in, in, as an in investment underlying asset, okay? It just use them as a tool. We can use a derivative to help us to reduce, to control the risk, to control risk, okay? And because, because we can design any kind of derivatives uh, maybe I can say it's kind of tool we can we can just create anytime we can create anytime okay for for example suppose now maybe uh, you find some company they just find a new chem chemical elements they just find some some chemical elements. Okay, and you think, okay, this element is useful. In the future, they will contribute to our, our the world very, very big. Okay, and it has a very a big potential. Okay, so you like to invest on this. Okay, but it has a risk. Yeah, I'm not sure. If it succeeds, okay, maybe you can earn money. If you fail, you will lose, you will lose. Okay, and in this situation, in this situation, maybe, Maybe no other uh, related uh, elements, just like the new chemical e elements. Okay, if you put all your money on this, you have to take a big risk. Okay, 
So maybe you can find a bank, okay, and just sign a, a future, a forward contract. Maybe we can use forward contract. We just tr tr try to, to sign a forward contract, okay. And based on the forward contract, you are going to sell something to, to the, the, the bank, okay. And in, in this contract, I can try to control the, the risk. I can reduce the risk, okay? Because the new chemical element has many uncertainty in the future. I mean, if you, I'm not sure that the price is going to up or down. I'm not sure, okay? If, if it's successful, maybe the, the price going up. Okay, if fail, maybe going down. Okay, so I'm not sure. So you can just try to find some uh, in counterparty and sign a sign a, a, a forward contract with you. A forward contract is also kind of derivatives. It also kind of derivatives, okay? Because the forward contract it with not any value, just like the just sort of say no special purpose. It provided maybe you can say no any not any value because. Why we call it derivatives? Because the product itself, it doesn't provide any value. It does, it does not like your, maybe your iPhone, your iPhone, including many useful parts in, inside. So it works. Why it, it, you have to pay $10, $1,000, uh, $1, $1 or $20,000 to purchase one, one iPhone? Because it works. Okay. But how about a contract? A futures, an option, or a forward agreement. They just a contract, a contract. It doesn't with any physical value. Okay. So it's just a contract. The value is depends on some other goods, some other goods. Okay. So later I'm going to introduce this, this, this and, and introduce how to use future, futures to, to hedge. Okay. So I think because it's easy to create a new derivatives that based on your uh, your purpose. Okay, if you need some new one, I can easy to cre create one. Okay, if you can find some some bank, most of the time you, you like to find a bank. If not a standard product, and maybe you can find a bank, and they are way, willing to sign a contract with you. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some concept about uh, the derivatives. Okay, the first one, futures. Okay, a future, just like I say, is a, in fact, is a, con is a contract. Okay, it's an agreement to buy and sell particular sh shares or, or goods, etc. cetera. On a, a particular date in the future at a fixed price, it means we just make the deal today. Okay, and we will deliver the goods in the future. Okay, but today we have to uh, design the, the price. So we will design the price today and a month day. Okay, and if I buy and then you say you sell, you have to sell. Okay, so the two parts, two parties, one is buyer, the other one is seller. Okay, so one agree to sell and one agree to, to, to buy. Okay, this is futures. This is futures, okay. And options, and options contract offers to offers the buyer the opportunity to buy or sell, depends on type of contract they hold. Okay. In fact, options we have two types: a call and a put. Call option, it means allowed, give you the right in the future to buy. Call to buy, okay. And put to sell, put to sell. Okay, put option is give you the right to sell. Okay, so if you you like to sell something in the future, okay, and you have to buy a put option. A put option allowed you in the future to sell things. Okay, and you, you, you in the future you need to buy something. Okay, and you have to buy a call. A call will give you the right to purchase some some goods in the future. Okay, so it depends your purpose and the purpose will affect you to buy a call or 
or to buy a, a put. Okay. So the buyer for the option, a buyer has the right. Okay. So today I'm not going to discuss about options. So I'm going to discuss about futures. Okay. The first one, okay, long hedge or blue hedge. Okay. In investment, maybe you already know long, it means buy. You have to buy. You have to buy something to hedge to reduce your risk. Okay. So you have a short position. It means you already sell something, but uh, you are going to deliver the goods in the future, not now. Okay. So you, you are going to deliver the goods in the future. Okay. So you have a, few, uh, a short position. And in order to avoid the risk of rising, for example, here I just give you an example. You, you, you need some uh, petroleum to produce something, okay? And you are worried about the, the, the price, the, the petroleum price goes up, okay? So you must buy the future if you like to hedge, okay? You like to buy, so you need to buy futures to hedge the risk. Okay, for example, here you are a gas producer. Okay, so you have to purchase some petroleum and refinery, the gas, the refinery, refine the gas, do you refine the, the, the petroleum the petroleum to be gas? Okay. And so in, in the next in the six months later, okay, you need one one thousand barrels. You need one one thousand barrels of petroleum in, in six months later. Okay, and now suppose the, the price per, per barrel is $50, it's $50 now. So if you, not, you, you purchase the, the, the petroleum right now, you have to pay $50 per barrel right now. Okay, but you, are, you don't need the, 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 the petroleum right now. So you are not going to purchase, not going, going to purchase, purchase the petroleum right now, but you are worried about the, the price goes up. Okay, you, you are worried about the price goes up. Now you purchase 50, but if the price goes up, you have to pay more, you have to pay more. Okay, so if the petroleum price goes up to $70 per bar barrel, six months later. Okay, so let's see that what, what's going to happen. So you can see here, okay, without hedge, if you don't do anything, okay, you just wait. You just wait until you need the, 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 the petroleum and you purchase the petroleum. Okay, so the cost goes up from 50,000 to 70,000. Okay, because in the beginning, the petroleum per barrel is $50. Okay, and you, you need 1,000 barrels in total. Okay, so in total, if you purchase in the beginning, you, 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 you only pay 50,000. But now, because the price goes up from fifty to seventy dollars, so in total the cost goes up from fifty thousand to seventy thousand. Okay, so how about hedge? Okay, hedge. Suppose you loan one lot petroleum futures at fifty-five dollar per bar barrel. Okay, in the beginning, now the spot. The price in stock is about fifty dollars. This is for maybe it's in in stock for in stock. Okay, so in in that day maybe the future price is fifty five, is fifty five. Okay, and suppose okay you you just loan a lot petroleum futures at fifty five dollar per ba barrel. Okay, and suppose one lot is one thousand barrel of petroleum. Okay, so you 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 just purchase. You just loan one lot futures in this contract worth 1,000 barrels. Okay, so the cost petroleum is $70 because after the maturity, okay, six months later, okay, and you still need the, the petroleum, okay, you cannot use just use the petroleum contract to produce gas. No, you, you still need to purchase the real petroleum. Okay, so you just offset your futures. You just offset your futures. And also you purchase petroleum from the market. The market, you have to pay $70 per, per 
for payroll. Okay, so you have to pay seventy dollar, seventy thousand dollar, okay, to purchase the 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 petroleum. Okay, but but you will earn fifteen thousand from the future market because you buy fifty five dollar per barrel. Okay, and now it worth about seventy dollar, seventy dollar. Okay, so when you offset the contract, you will earn fifteen thousand dollar. You will earn fifteen thousand dollar from the future market. So in total, in total, your cost is fifty five thousand. Is fifty five thousand. It means, it means, in fact, in fact, you will find here because when you hedge, the price is fifty five, fifty five, and in total you need one thousand barrel. Okay, so fifty five. Barrels, fifty-five, fifty-five dollar times one thousand barrels. So in total, the cost is fifty-five thousand. Okay. So when you hedge, you already lock your cost at fifty-five thousand dollars. Okay. So this is the difference. So you can compare after you hedge, you save the cost about fifteen thousand. Okay. And short hedge, short hedge, or bear hedge. Okay, we use we use bull and bear to describe up or down. Okay, here you can see you can see here. Here is bull. Okay, bull hedge. Okay, it means you are worried about up. So more when you go to the Wall Street, you will, you may find they put a gold a golden bull in Wall Street. Okay, because all the investor like. The stock market price goes up, so they just put a gold, gold, gold boom there. Okay, and when we're talking about bear, it means down. The price goes down. Okay, so here you have a long position. Okay, it means now you already have some products. Okay, but you cannot sell right now. Okay, in order to avoid the risk of decline. Okay, also use the the petroleum price. You must sell futures. You must sell futures. For example, you have an oil field. Okay, so in the in the oil field, contains many uh, crude oil, or the, the the petroleum. Okay, they they in, can contain many many petroleums, and you are going to produce one thousand barrel. Sorry, okay. Then. Okay, so you are going to produce one thousand barrels in the future. Okay, in the six months. Okay, but you are not produce right now. Okay, you are going to produce later. Okay, and now the price is about fifty fifty dollar per barrel. Okay, so you are going to produce one thousand barrels of petroleum, and you are worry about the price goes down. Now it's fifty. If the the price goes down, it will affect your revenue. Okay. So suppose now the 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 petroleum price goes down to forty per barrel. Okay. Six months later, in the beginning it's fifty, and now it goes down to forty dollar. Okay. Just go to forty dollar. Okay. So I can see here without hedge, without hedge. Okay. The revenue. Goes down from fifty because in the beginning the price is fifty. Okay, so you can get fifty thousand. Okay, but now because the price goes down to forty, so in total you can only get forty thousand revenue. Okay, so the revenue reduced about ten thousand dollars. Okay, and hedge if you just hedge. Okay, so you just short one that petroleum futures at. Maybe the price is forty-eight dollar barrels. Okay, so under the, the day and the beginning, the 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 futures price is about forty-eight, forty-eight per per barrel. Okay. Also, we just suppose one lot is one thousand barrels of of petroleum. Okay. So the revenue of petroleum is forty. Um, six months late, six months later. Okay, because the price is forty, and after you produce one thousand barrels. 
you can sell at forty dollar per per barrel, and finally you can get forty thousand dollars. Okay, and so in the in stock, you can earn about forty thousand dollars. But but because six months six months before, you already short a contract, and how much you 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 sell forty eight dollars. Okay, forty eight dollars. But now the the you you sell at forty dollars, and now the price is forty. So when you offset the contract, you can earn for you can earn eight thousand dollars. You can you can earn eight eight thousand dollars. Okay. So in total, in stock you will earn forty forty thousand dollars. Okay. In the future, in the futures, you will earn eight thousand dollars. So in total, you are going to earn forty eight thousand dollars. The forty-eight thousand dollars, just like in your uh, future futures, you can see here. Per barrel is forty-eight forty-eight dollars, one thousand. So, so it means in the first day, in the beginning, you already sold the one hundred barrels of petroleum. Okay, so the revenue already fixed. At forty-eight thousand dollars. Okay, so in in on that day, when you hedge, you already control. You already fix your revenue to be forty-eight thousand dollars. So in these two cases, you will find when you hedge on that day, you already fix your revenue or you already fix your cost at a certain number, at a certain amount, a certain amount. Okay, so this is what we say. We can use the rub tip to help you to control the risk. After you hedge, you already fix the cost. No any any fluctuation, not any fluctuation, because we already fixed the cost. We already fixed the the revenues. Okay, not any fluctuation, no volatile. Okay. But we have to consider one thing, okay? The purpose of risk management, okay? In the last example, you may you may think, uh, hedge seems good because when you, when we hedge, we seem to can control, reduce the re, 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 reduce the 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 costs, or we can increase the the revenues. But in fact, this is not. This is not okay. In the, the the two examples, we just give you the for example here, the first one, we just assume the petroleum price goes up to seventy dollar. How about if the petroleum price goes down to forty, to forty? It means if the price goes up to goes down to to forty, if we, without hedge. You can only pay forty dollars per barrel to get the, the the petroleum. Okay, so in total, you only have to pay forty thousand dollar, but because you hedge, so you still have to have to pay fifty thousand. You still have to pay have to pay fifty thousand dollar. Okay, here. Yeah, this is we after we hedge, so we just fix our cost, our cost at fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and now suppose the price is not here. We just suppose the price become to how much seventy. Okay, suppose it's not seventy. Suppose the the price is forty. Suppose the price is forty. If the price is forty. Without hedge, our cost will be forty thousand dollars. Only forty thousand dollars because it's forty times one thousand barrels. Okay. At this situation, at this situation, your cost can reduce to forty thousand dollars. But because you hedge, because you hedge, because you hedge, okay, the cost will be. Fifty-five, fifty-five, fifty-five thousand. 
will be 55,000. Okay, in this age, you will find without H will be better. Okay, so H is not going to help you to increase your revenue. It's not always can help you to, to increase the revenue. It just trying to help us to fix, to reduce the fluctuation, okay, to fix the cost, to fix the revenue, okay, to reduce the fluctuation. Okay, so I think this is very, very important. If one day you work in a, a department of management, okay, you have to tell your boss, okay, hey, is not going to help us to increase the profit, okay? It's not to create a profit, okay? It's not to create a profit, okay? We just try to help us, okay, to, to fix, to reduce the, the fluctuation, okay? So risk management is not a weapon for profit, okay? You cannot use, you, you cannot use the, the, the tool to help us to, to make more profit, no? Okay, but it is necessary equipment for survival. Okay, it means, okay, if you sometimes, sometimes without, without hedge, maybe the company cannot survive just because one adverse event occurred. Okay, some adverse events occurred, it may destroy one company, just one, just one without the, 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 the hedge. Okay, so risk measure is important, but it's not for profit. Okay, it's for survival. It's for survival. You just help us to control the loss, control the loss. Okay, so financial risk management folks on controlling loss rather than creating profit. I, I think this is very, very important concept. We have to remember. Okay, the past and the modern of risk measurement. Okay, so in the past, we just focus on insurance. Okay, just like I say, you, you feel some, you, you, you know some risk, you identify some risk, and you just try to find, maybe purchase some insurance to transfer the, the risk. Okay, and before we also care, care about the, the on probability measurement and the prediction. Okay, we just like to measure and predict how much about the risk and also risk diversification. Okay, we just try to diversify the risk, okay, to reduce the risk. Okay, and modern, you know, nowadays, okay, we use a lot of financial derivative, okay, to help us to reduce the risk. Okay, and the risk measurement mechanics should be able to quantify. Okay, so we use many mathematical models. Okay, because we like to use the model help us to, to quantify. Okay, so you, you have to quantify the risk exposure and measure financial risk in more objective and scientific way. Okay, so this is why we use a lot of mathematical method. Okay. Except financial derivative, we also have a new new tools, asset security ratio. Okay. My last part, I like to introduce this asset security ratio. But I, I just give you some easy concept about, about the asset security ratio. Okay. And suppose now in your family you you need some money because you are going to purchase a house okay for your your family okay but you don't have enough money so you just like to borrow some money from the bank you would like to make a loan from the bank okay so in the first you just borrow the money from the bank okay and you just pay to the and uh, and the bank get got the the credit right it means in the future, maybe 20 or 30 years in Taiwan, when, we, you, when you make a housing loan, normally 20 years or 30 years. Okay, so in the next 20 or 30 years, every month, you have to pay uh, interest and some, some, some principal to the bank, to the bank. It means in the future, the bank will receive the money back, back 
maybe average time 10 years to, to 15 years. Okay. So the family paid the money to the, 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 the builder and they got the property right. Got the property right. Okay. So just like say here every year or every month, the, 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 the family they have to pay the interest and the, the, the property for 20 or 30 years. Okay, so for the bank, they will get, they will collect the money back. Average is about the duration, average about 10 to 15 years. Okay, but for the bank, it's not a good idea. It's not a good, how to say this? Okay, because, because for the bank, they need to use money to make more money. Okay, they like to use more money to make more money. Okay, but now because I, I lend money to the, the family and I'm going to take the money back in 10 to 15 years, average, average. Okay, so someone may just think, okay, maybe I have some way to get the money back in advance. Okay, so they just set up a special purpose entity. Okay, it's like a paper company. It's just like a paper company. Okay, and then the bank, they just transfer all the credit creditors right to the special property, special purpose entity. Okay, but because, because the rights, it belongs to bank, the spatial property cannot get the, the, the right for free, cannot get the revive for free. So the spatial property, spatial property and spatial purpose entity, they just design uh, something just like a stock certificate. It's just like a stock certificate or the bond certificate and sell to the investor and sell to the investor. Okay, and the investor, they just pay the money to the spatial purpose entity and the spatial property and, and the spatial purpose entity, they just put the money, return the money to the bank. Okay, so now you will find, okay, I need some what? So in the beginning, the family, they borrow the money. Okay, they borrow the money to purchase the house. Okay, and the bank get the, the, get the, the creditors right. Okay, in the future, the, the family, they are return the money back to the bank. But, but, but it will continue for, I think, two, 10 to 15 years. It's too long for the bank. Okay, so they think, okay, I just transfer the, the right to the spatial purpose entity. Okay, so the spatial purpose entity, they get the right. Okay, they just design a certificate. It's just like a stock and sell to the investor. Okay, so the, the investor, they just pay the money to the spatial purpose entity. And the, the, the spatial purpose entity, they just put the money to the bank. Okay, so the money now is back to the bank, back to the bank. Okay, so in the beginning, maybe I think then, because the bank, okay, in the beginning, they lend the, the money to the, the household, they will charge the, the family maybe 5%. Maybe, sorry, it's about 5%. 5%. But when they design the new certificate and sell the certificate to the investor, okay, they are going to pay the investor maybe 4%, maybe 4%. Okay, so the bank, they just earn 1% and they already get, got all the money back. They, they already got all the money back. Okay, got only all the money back. Okay, so when the following, when the bank received the money from the, the family, the money, they will put the money, give the money to the special entity and the special, special purpose entity, they will put the money 
to the investment, the investors, the investors. So you will find, okay, after the, they, they use the asset security ration, the bank can get the money soon, maybe two years, okay, maybe two years. So they don't have to spend 10 to 15 years to receive the, the money back, only 10 years or one, one year or two years. And then they get the money back, they make a loan again, make a loan again to find someone to borrow money from the bank, okay? So, and also because the money already, the, the, the credit, credit, creditors right already transferred to the, the, the special purpose entity, Okay, so after they transfer the right here, okay, they already isolate from the, the, the right. Okay, so if there are some, maybe there are some loan that cannot, I mean, maybe there are some family that they, they, they fail, they, they, they be default, they cannot repay the, the interest or the, the, the principal. And, this is nothing to do with the bank because they already transfer all the, the, the right to the new company. This one, the new company. Okay, so the new company already received all the right, all the right. Okay, so now they already transfer all the risk to, sorry, risk, risk. They already transfer all the risk to the investors. Investor. This is also a kind of uh, risk management. Okay. So, in I think in before 2007, we can find many, many products. I mean, the asset securitization products. But after 2007, because the financial tsunami, yeah, just because the asset security, security product. Okay. So, more and more government, they control about the, 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 the market. And also more and more the investor, they worry about the asset security product, okay? Because it's not easy to understand for most of the investors, okay? Yeah, because we don't have, to have time to give you a deeper discourse, okay? So I think I, this part, I, I will stop here, okay? Just, just about, give you an easy concept, how asset security are used to uh, reduce the risk, uh, especially for, for a bank. Okay, in fact, not just a bank. Okay, any uh, credit right can produce a regular cash flow. We can use them to make a loan, okay. For example, in this case, I just say about, okay, housing loan, okay? Because the housing loan in the future, you, you know, in the future, the family, they will pay the money to the bank regularly, regularly, okay? But for something, okay, especially maybe in the company, they have some account receivable, Okay, account receivable, if you have some account receivable, you can also use this way. Okay, maybe the, the account receivable is in maybe one year, two years. Okay, you will receive the money. For example, okay, you are uh, maybe publisher. Okay, you, 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 you publish maybe some mag magazine. Okay, in the magazine, you will issue every, maybe every month. Okay, so, the, the, the people will pay you the, the money by month and every year you will receive some money from, from the people. Okay, so also this kind of revenue, this kind of account receivable, you can also use, use, use the right to be the asset securitization. Okay. Okay, so the last part. Okay, so in the this week and last week, we introduced something about uh, the risk measurement and how to hedge, okay. But in fact, maybe you are thin, it seems a lot of mathematics. Yes, you are right. Okay, but in fact, we already reduced a lot in our class. I mean, this week and last week. 
Okay, because I we, we don't we only have two weeks, so I cannot give you too much. Especially, I like to know I like you to know the most important concept. So I just try to avoid some 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 mathematics. But in fact, in fact. In this field, if you are interested about uh, risk management, you have to study a lot of mathematics, statistics. Okay, so you can see here a large, large number of mathematics, statistics, and even physical theories and, and, and methods. I, I think physical theory, physical theory is the most important is about the Brownian motion. Maybe you already heard about this one. It's from physical, it's from physical. In the beginning, they, some, some scientists, they, they just observe the flower powder in the water and explode, explode. And we cannot predict the, the direction and, and, and the size. Okay, so they, they just name it brown emotion, brown emotion. So later, some people just use the concept in financial, okay. So in, in financial, if we like, we like use use Monte Carlo simulation, or we like to use st stochastic uh, calculate cal calculus. We need to use the uh, Brownian motion, okay. So Brownian Brownian motion is from physical theory, okay. So we need to learn a lot of mathematics, statistics. Okay, because just like we say, we have to quantify. You have to quantify the risk. Okay, so we use a lot of mathematics, statistics, and, and physical theory and, and methods, not just theory, maybe method. Okay, we use used in, in the research of asset pricing and risk management to, to further strengthen the, the development of field of financial risk management. Okay, so if you are interested Maybe in the in the in in the first you, you can study the major risk ma, ma, uh, risk management okay in the beginning and your passport maybe you can learn something more about the statistics and maybe uh, stochastic cal calculus okay okay I think today I'm going to stop here because we need to some you need some time to discuss. Okay, I, I think I just leave some time for students. If you have some problem, maybe we can discuss. Okay, thank you so much, professors. <laughs> it's, it's it's very good explanation today. Okay, maybe, uh yeah, it's the one part of the important of the risk management is about the hedging. Uh, yeah, we know that the professor already explained about the instrument of hedging. We have so many instruments here. So maybe the one of you that uh, uh, maybe heard about the diversification, like the professor said before, because uh, I think all of you already uh, learned about diversification in investment management subject in the second years. And uh, Maybe the part, all of you maybe can can share your your uh, your experience here and uh, and we introduce as well about the other tools about the in hedging about the derivative especially we discuss about the future <laughs> today's and uh, because we know that in instrument derivative instrument is we have so many tools not only future maybe like professor said we have option maybe. We have forward and we have the swap. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is very, very, very good insight. So, maybe uh, I will invite to all of the participants that maybe have the question. Uh, if you uh, any job or any uh, uh, question that you want to ask to the professor Lee, uh, you can uh, raise your hand directly, maybe uh, using the raise hand tools in your your zoom or uh, you can write your uh, question into the uh, chat yeah into, into the chat book uh, zoom chat okay anyone will have the question here
No one try to one comment. Try to okay. Uh, yeah. No one. No uh, one. <laughs> Maybe but Tofik. Yeah, I think it's fine. If if yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe she just but Tofik. Yeah, because okay. uh, I think yeah, I think all of this uh, student already uh, 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 take the course about investment management. We're talking about also in diversification as well in that subject. Uh, uh, maybe uh, the one of you that, that uh, maybe have the experience because, like I said uh, in the previous meeting, that all of the students already also must uh, do the real tradings uh, in 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 investment management subjects. So, uh, if you want to uh, maybe share about your your doing in 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 your investment, I think it is better to to discuss here. And but. Uh, if you don't have any question, uh, any question before that, it is. Oh, I think this maybe it's clear for them <laughs> to, to to understand this one. I think it's good. Uh, yeah, maybe I have the one question. Maybe when we waiting, uh, maybe the the participant to to ask about the, the derivative because we so much instrument here. Maybe. Uh, one, uh, all of the students maybe we don't know how to uh, choose the, the the best tools in derivative that 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 we have to use in 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 our investment. So the professor, any maybe consideration about uh, the tools that we have used in in derivative, maybe regarding about the investment that that uh, they made. For example, when we have the uh, basis in commodity for example so maybe we we prefer to use future like you said in petroleum or something and but uh for example when the student have the uh, business for example uh, or uh, invest in the uh, forex for example in 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 in, in uh, exchange rate uh, so most of them may be using uh forward or options for example to 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 use uh, to avoid the, the fluctuation. So, any consideration to choose the the tools, professors? Maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not. I didn't catch your point. So maybe you can uh, give me a about your the question consideration again. about the consideration to choose the tools of the derivative, in derivative tools. We have so okay, many. Okay, tools. okay, okay. I got it. Got yeah, it. Got yeah. it. Uh, I think in the first, we had to make things clear, okay, your purpose. And you, you also have to let your boss know the concept about uh, the, the risk measurement. Okay, Th this is most important. And how about the tools? <laughs> I, I, I think for students, especially in the beginning, I, I think futures and option is more easy to understand. Especially, I, I, I do believe most of you will study about uh, options and uh, futures in, in school. Okay, but sometimes just like a, like a professor talk fix said, we can use swap, but swap sometimes is very complex, especially for for uh, new, new investors. Okay, so I'm not suggest you to use swap in the beginning. Okay, I, I do remember in, in many years ago, and GMP, a, a, a company, very, very big company, they just signed a, a swap with a, a, a bank and they lost a lot of money. Okay, they have some, some big problems. Okay, so even in a big company, they, they were also cannot totally control about the, 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 the detail about the swap. So I will, I, will, I, will, I will suggest a students in the beginning, I mean in the beginning, okay, if you have, you, you have an, any need about the, the hedge, you need some tool, tools to help you to, to hedge futures and option, maybe option that you can choose to have option to be the first one and then futures. Okay, just like I, I always talk to my students, if you like to invest in develop, develop, developments and de derivatives, in the beginning, not 
go to purchase or sell futures. Okay, you can get into the upstream market to feel the market, to understand the market. Okay, after you well know about the market, and you can try to a little bit about the futures and more and more. Okay, so for the the hedge, I also give the the students same suggestions. Okay, in the beginning, futures, in the beginning options, and then futures maybe will be better. Okay, and especially in, in fact, in in options we have many many different different options to use. For example, Professor Taufik just said about maybe exchange rate. Okay, for for example, you Im import or export product to some other different countries. So every month you you may receive your starter every month. Okay, so you have you like to hedge you the 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 exchange risk exchange rate risk. Okay, in this situation maybe you think okay, if you use future you have to hedge every month, but if you use options, I can use Asian options Asian options. They, they just give you a, a perfect tool, okay? Because Asian option, they just use average exchange rate. So mm -hmm. I can use this month, next month, and next month, their average exchange rate. I use this this average exchange rate to hedge. You are perfect because I every month I can, I will receive some, some US dollar. Okay, so I think in, in, in option market, we can find many, many good tools to, to use. So in the beginning, I will, I will suggest use options. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, that's why. Because maybe the derivative tools, maybe it's not too familiar to, to maybe uh, all to our students because how maybe because they know how to use that. <laughs> so so that's why. But I think because it's very important uh, to use uh, instrument hedging here as uh, the tools of the risk management. Uh, yeah. Any question from the participants, maybe? From the student? No? Okay. <laughs> maybe because there's a question. Uh, okay, maybe thank you, Professor, for the explanation today. Yeah, I hope that uh, all of the students uh, will get the insight about the risk management overall yeah because yeah because the time limitation because we talking about the risk management is we have so many uh materials that maybe we have to we have to cover because yeah okay once again thank you professor for for the explanation and before we uh stop the discussion today maybe uh we can uh heard about the closing statement maybe from uh our head of department uh uh to mrs sertna witowati uh maybe the time is yours yeah uh thank you very much uh Taufik. thank you again dr lee yeah for your kind help <laughs> to giving uh to give our students and us inside about the risk management, yeah? Even this is not my uh, my field, however, <laughs> I also ask my students of marketing to, to learn. Insight is always uh, useful, <laughs> yeah. Uh, can thank you and hopefully uh, next time you still have time, still have chance, uh, you dare to give us uh, your lecture again. Thank you. <laughs> and if everything will be better, the situation, yeah. you may come to our campus at person so. <laughs> in person. Yeah. And yeah, we can uh, share everything. Yeah. Last time is uh, also one professor of management science already come to. Uh, Professor Leo, yeah, uh, come to our campus for one month, yeah, to be visiting professors. Okay. So who uh, knows later, Professor Lily and you 
could come okay. to our campus. Yeah, hopefully situ okay. the situation will be better and yeah. better both in Taiwan and Indonesia. Okay, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome again. Thank you very much. And hopefully we can meet you again next time. Okay. Uh, for all the students, thank you uh, for your participation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see that uh, in the middle, all uh, before we will close, uh, more than 40 students, yeah, mm -hmm. more than 45 students, yeah, participate in this guest lecture. Yeah, so it's good enough, <laughs> more than one class. <laughs> yeah, and thank you very much, students, thank you. Bu Indah and Pak Taufik who help this uh, guest lecture program. Mm -hmm. Ya, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Oke, okay, uh, thank you uh, to uh, Mrs. Nawitawati as uh, our head of department. Oke, okay, uh, maybe uh, this is uh, the end of this event of the guest lecture. Uh, with the Professor Lee with understanding about the risk management and I hope to all of you can uh, get the some insight and learning something from from uh, our our lecture our lecturing uh, here and before we closing uh, uh, maybe I will remember to all of you about the uh, is mm -hmm. yeah I will uh, remembering about the is event the one of you that maybe have the paper or your proposal of your research, you can join to, to the Iskombus by contact uh, Himama. And once again, thank you very much to Professor Lee and to all of the students. And we can close this event by saying Habdallah together. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. For thank you. you Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> Greetings from Yogyakarta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Professor Lee. Thank you, yeah, Pak Taufik. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much. You are welcome, Pak Taufik. Yeah. <laughs> Pak Taufik, please.